Hello, welcome to the Chef's Pantry. I'm Anna Rossi. And is there anything better than a holiday to get excited about a meal? I don't think so. This week we have St. Patrick's Day on Wednesday. And listen, guys, we all are a little bit Irish when it comes to this holiday. So we're cooking with our absolute favorite Irishman, Brian Buckley, born and raised in Ireland. And now he is based in Boston. Lucky for us. And we've been making this a tradition. We've cooked together a few times in the Hub Cooking Club and are thrilled to have him on the chef's pantry. He is an elite athlete, an incredible chef, and has really under nailed the balance of good food, good drinks, and a healthy lifestyle with a Pilates facility out in P-Town. So Brian, we're headed to you on Cape Cod. How are you? Hello, Anna, and happy St. Patrick's Day, love. How are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's so Day. No, so, great to see you. Brian, I love that we've made this a tradition. You're my favorite person to kick off the holiday with. Fantastic. Well, let's kick it off then. And Should we start with a drink? Well, I like that you're getting right down to it. Okay, what are you drinking? I am going to make something called an Irish tea party, love. Yeah, so a little slant. We're a nation of tea drinkers, but you know, if you add a little bit of whiskey and a little bit of absinthe into it, you can kind of have a nice little concoction. So, oh my goodness, absinthe. Yes, splashiest of. So you're literally talking about the tiniest splash of absinthe to literally wet your glass. So cause you little round there like that. Okay. Nice bit of ice. And then, your beautiful whiskey. Thank you to my sister Mary for sending that to me. And that's a special whiskey. What, what, what have you had it before? Ah, uh, yes, I've had most of them. They're all beautiful. They're all Irish. I mean, why would they not be perfect? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, you, you. And then, then on top of the whiskey, I've allowed the Barry's tea to go cold. And what is that like? An Irish breakfast tea? Yes, but you know, it, as a tea drinker, you could use whatever tea you like yourself. And if you're someone that likes a little bit of sugar in your tea, you should put a half a spoon of sugar in with it as well. Yeah, it, Lovely little bit of lemon. lemon on the top there. Oh, Do I see a can of Guinness? I've got my little Guinness, but it's all, I must have been running to the car. It was so freezing today. Oh. <laughs> but this Guinness, in the spirit of, of starting the day off right, I'll give that one to my husband. <laughs> it's it's the Guinness Nitro Cold Brew Coffee. Have you tried it? Lovely, yes. So yes. We'll, we'll have to give it a pour. Really gorgeous, yeah. I don't think glass. I've ever had absinthe before. What is it? Herbal? Like, what's the flavor like? Uh, no, absinthe it is something that is used in such tiny quantities that you can't really taste it. It's more more like an enhancer. Okay, I was thinking like when you when you just coated the glass like that, it's almost like how you would use a bitters, isn't it? Yes, and you know. You so Brian, you told me make it more of an old fashioned. I like that. Now, now you warned me before we rolled to very carefully pull. Oh. <laughs> and now you turn to the game. Get out of here! Wait, you guys are watching me. You told me to. This is my first beer, I promise. You think I Are you had sure? Beer. This okay. is not my first whiskey today. <laughs> You're doing far better than me. Cheers. Or Cheers up. Santa. Mm. Oh, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Wow, I like beautiful. the coffee. So, okay, St. Patrick's Day. Tell us about the holiday. Like, what is it like in Ireland on St. Patty's Day? Ah, it's absolutely magic. And we, of course, you know, like we do with most of our holidays, we turn them into a week. So uh, you've got your festivals, you've got your parades, you've got uh, a lot of cooking. You know, there's one or two tourists around as well, and they seem to enjoy themselves. Is it a lot different than how American Irish and Americans embrace the holiday? Yeah, slightly. Slightly. I mean, we are more family or orientated with St. Patrick's Day itself. Uh, it tends to be, uh, obviously, it's a time of year when rugby is um, in full swing as well. So we do tend to be involved in an awful lot of sports as well. And uh, most of the athletes are playing games on the day. You know, we might be lucky in Ireland might actually be playing. Uh, so it's pretty expression. calm. It's very mellow. Not a lot of cheering. No no rumpus. No, and, or no, no, no cheering at all. No Guinness. 
No laughing. <laughs> no, because my first experience with St. Patty's Day was uh, going to Broadway, like West Broadway Street in Southie by accident to meet up with a friend on St. Patrick's Day. And the like, it was like nothing I've ever seen. I no. think it was the number one um, drinking holiday in Boston, just like the bars. And I mean, it, it's such a, a movie. Well, I'm sure it was fun and everybody was having a lovely time. Everybody was really in the spirit, but it of course is paying homage to St. Saint Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, right? Patron saint of Ireland, yes, indeed, you know? And uh, so we, uh, we're, we're slightly more calm in how we celebrate it at all. But mm -hmm. that's not to say that every bar in Ireland isn't full either. <laughs> so, okay, so the Irish breakfast is multifunctional, right? It's delicious, but it's also a dish that can really like coat your innards. Like uh, yeah, it can get you. It can get you ready for a day in Southie, to be honest. Yeah, and the lovely thing about it is that it's a, it's an all day thing. So you can have it for, you know, in the morning with your coffee. You can easily have it for lunch. Uh, it's very high protein. It's very good for you, and it's great fun. And we made uh, the what do you call it? The full Irish breakfast. Yes. When we cooked together uh, two years ago, that was so yes, delicious. Sure. And, and remember, we were, it was like we were in this beautiful kitchen, but we were making do with all the, uh, we forgot our utensils or something, right? We forgot a lot of stuff, yes, but um, it was still great fun. But that I remember it was absolutely beautiful. We had plenty of butter. So, what is in our Irish breakfast this year? What really makes a great <laughs> this year? Now, what I what I've got, I've got your tradition. I've got your sausages and rashers because it wouldn't be an Irish breakfast without them. I'm doing the black and white pudding. I've got some tomatoes. Uh, some people like to do it with uh, with beans. Some people like to do it with uh, with mushrooms as well. I made some lovely brown soda bread last night, so that's going to be part of the toast as well. So, should we get cracking? Yeah, let's get cracking. All right. Now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna heat up my pan uh, for the sausages kind of first, right? Uh, and second pudding third. Okay, we're gonna start with the the sausages, and then you said the rashers. Yeah, they're just that little bit more dense, love. So you know you want um they're going to take that little bit more time to cook through. Great, and then these are like Vermont maple sausages. These are Irish bangers, right? These are fantastic. Yeah, I've got the Tommy Maloney's here. Fantastic hey, rock this butcher. Is he based in Ireland or is how what? What's what, the American, what the American company that just um, does the butchering in the Irish fashion? You know, and okay. um, I honestly have to tell you that his stuff tastes as authentic as what it does at home. Maybe it's, but anybody Irish watching this now is going to be familiar with the Super Queen sausages. These two taste. Just as good. So there's yeah. the sun in there now. Great. And he has a great mail order program too. So it must be really fun for you yes. to have a taste of home at your fingertips. Uh, you know, it's just great. Everything can get delivered to your house. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a full pan of all these great uh, bangers. <laughs> And then uh, we're going to get get some nice browning with a little bit of olive oil. Have you gone ahead and yes, put a little yeah. butter in there, or do you hold on to that? Say that again, look. Do I think we've got a little Wi-Fi challenge here. Um, do I do we Do you go ahead and put butter in your pan, or do you like to wait? Yeah, you can put some butter in. Uh, you can put a drizzle of olive oil if you like. You know, the sausages are going to take a little bit longer to cook all the way through. Okay. Great. Okay, oh, and when they're in and you see that they're starting to brown on one side, we'll start our pan for the rashers. And rashers? I, well, will you tell us, what are rashers, Brian? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, here in America, you kind of, you know, uh, you'd be describing them as bacon. They're off the back rasher, and they are a little bit thicker than what you'd be used to. Over here, we are completely addicted to them at home. It's kind of like a cross almost between Canadian bacon and American bacon. Which Closer is like to Canadian bacon. bacon. Yeah. Um, okay. But you know what was funny? So mm -hmm. I, was, I couldn't get my order in on time for Tommy Maloney. 
so I have to go back and do that because I can't wait to try his black and white pudding. We love them. We absolutely love them. So I was calling all these butchers today all over the North Shore. And I was like, um, I'm looking for um, rashers and black and white pudding and bangers. And they were like, this is the meat department. And I'm like, this is meat. And I'm like, what? It's like we only have Italians up here that are buying the meat for the meat market. The meat. Okay, yeah. So it wouldn't be as commonplace now down in Boston and out here in Cape Cod. You can get them anywhere. Right, right. I was thinking of like the Dorchester markets would be the place to go this time and of year. Especially. Dorchester, they have everything. Great. What uh, how are they looking at? Is that a sizzle for you? Yeah, I'm getting some nice little pan noises there. Yeah, I'd start to roll the pan for your rashers. Look. Great. Um, well, well, Brian, what's, what is it? What have things been like for you and Tomas? I mean, I feel like you guys are such jet setters under normal circumstances. Have you yes, just been it's been a, yeah, it's been a tough one, but at the same time, I was very lucky. I got home to Dublin for five weeks over Christmas when everything was open. That was fantastic. And, um, you know, things are looking up. The vaccine's on the way. We've both had our first shot. All of that is good. And, you know, I'm looking forward to this nice summer. Where How we can has the again. family been managing over there? Family are good. Family are good. I missed my sister's 60th birthday last week, but that was uh, that was a little bit emotional. But what we're going to do is that I turned 49 this year, which is kind of a nothing birthday. So I've swapped my birthday with my sister, Mary, and we're going to have her birthday on my birthday in October in Bunretton. Oh, that's so nice. It is. So, so you'll be able to go over there for an extended time, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll probably end up spending the whole month of December there again. Now, great. a little bit of fire. My first rasher has gone in there. Go, go, go. Sizzle, sizzle. And these, mine are very thin. They're probably like an eighth of an inch thin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mine too, love. Yeah. They're wonderful. So they are going to cook fairly quickly. But okay. at the same time, you want to get them nice and brown, nice and crispy as well. Great. No, they're cured, so they're a hundred percent safe, even if you like them done a little bit less. Okay, great. And how has your Pilates and fitness studio been doing in P Town? Uh, you know, you it's been amazing because everybody is working remotely at the moment. So the reality is, is that you know none of the regular clients left to go back to New York or to Boston. They're all still here. So um we have had so far the best winter ever. It's been absolutely great fun. It's so nice to be part of the community out here and to have an all year round business that's open for them. Yeah, right. Because ordinarily you would be jetting back and forth between the city yes. and the Cape. So how lucky we are in the middle of all of this is what we have to be kind of thankful for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Finding the new rhythm, finding the bright spots. For sure. Yeah, and the travel, the travel will come back. It yeah. will. Okay, are you hearing my sizzling? I, I've, I've got some good action. I've got some nice color forming on, um, on my bangers. So I'm just giving a little rotation. And then, do you like to let a little color form on your rashers? Now I'm going to turn this volume up here. Okay, I know. Oh, like now. Oh, no, 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 no. oh. Oh, oh yeah. so like I said, the rushers are starting to sizzle there, Anna. Yes! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have another sip. I actually jumped. Oh, it's very interactive over here. Okay. I just added a little bit more butter because I felt like that's what we needed. You've jumped. What's next? Wait, what, what? You spilled the drink. You burned yourself and jumped. What are you going to do next? <laughs> Well, we can only wait and see, right? But this is really something. My washers are sizzling nicely now. I am going to throw a little bit of black pepper, or what some would say would be a lot, over those. And see my nice sausages, the way that they're browning up here. Look. I'm going to throw some whole baby tomatoes all over them. I think Americans call them tomatoes today. And what have you done? Just like chopped, like a nice Roma tomato? Baby tomatoes just gone in there. They would sizzle away with the sauce. So is this a dish? Like, is this how your mom used to make it on, on St. Patrick's Day morning? This is how most 
Irish breakfasts are made every morning, if I'm to be honest. Really? Maybe not as elaborate as this, because you'd never make it to work if you were eating like this every morning. But yeah, Saturday, Sunday, you know? Well, how do you go from this to being an elite athlete? Is this what it takes? Uh, yes, there's nothing in here that's actually bad for you. It's actually all lean protein. So I wouldn't really have a problem with it. You don't, uh, you don't do it every day. Right, you need you need the protein for sure. Okay, what are you doing in that pan? Are you giving it a good little stir? Yes, indeed. Look, and now I've got the pudding now in as well. So I'm actually at that point where I'm turning it. Um, so tell us about the black and white pudding. So same sausage base. There is a little bit of a difference, and both of these have oats in them. Okay, so they're not gluten free. Uh, you can get gluten free versions of it. There is a little bit of blood into the black pudding. Some people don't like that. I like the white more than I like the black. Uh, Thomas likes both. Most people like, does like it them. have, uh, like the white and the black have different flavors? I think it's quite subtle. Yeah, and I'm, I'm imagining something that's like a rich, kind of like an iron sort of taste or flavor. How do you describe it? There's a lot, that, very much more rich, much more irony based. The white pudding itself, you wouldn't really realize you were even eating. It tastes more like a sausage. It might taste more like one of these banners now. Yeah. And you know what I do every now and then? I love chili. I throw a little bit of fresh, red, fresh, uh, dried, they're not fresh if they're dried, are they? Red chili flakes over the black pudding because I just uh, think it's a nice little addition. Oh, I like that little bit of heat because the bangers are quite mild, aren't they? They remind me a little bit of um, a yeah. bratwurst. Yeah, when I have friends over, sometimes I make guacamole and I put it in with the with the rashers as well. Wow, very nice. These are looking quite tasty. They're like little tiny ham, yeah. ham chips. Like I've got some nice color and then that nice little ring of fat has started to render off. Beautiful. Yeah, you know, maybe slice that. Now give it a little taste of and see. Everything here to me is looking quite nice as well. My sausages are expanding and browning. Uh, my rashers are looking nice and crispy. My pudding is looking well enough to get rested soon. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. It has a little... Um, this one anyway has a little sweetness to it not yep. like a cured sweetness but it's just very mild and it has a very nice light flavor to it it's still not heavily smoked excellent it's very nice Hi. okay I'm gonna, so, my three, I'm gonna turn my three pans off soon as i'm tracking my eggs i'm gonna rinse that meat so that when the eggs are ready i'm ready to serve okay easy easy peasy I'm going to put a little butter in my pan. There's no such thing as a little butter, Anna. Okay, I better do a bigger dollop. Then. There you go. Do you, do you like to use the Kerrygold butter? Or are oh, you picking is, is there such a thing as other butter? <laughs> I just think this is the best thing ever. I mean. Oh, yeah. No, there's no butter. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. And I love that saltiness of it. Okay. Here we go. I've got. I've. What do you think about this this proportion of butter? Is that re oh, ready for that egg fry? Yeah. I'll be like poaching my well, egg butter. Oh, yeah. I got mine there. My egg is ready to be So this is just going to be like a simple fried egg. In in theory, right? It can be simple to try, it can be over easy, and you can scramble it if you feel like it, it's going to taste just the same. Mm. What's really nice, Anna, is uh, if you have a small frying pan, I might try to do it here today now, is what we call a flip over. So you've got the two eggs in there. I'm going to put a bit of salt on them. And uh, if as they cook, you don't scramble them, you just flip the eggs over one on top of another, and it's like a little sandwich made of two eggs at this point in time i am turning my everything else off that means it's going to rest in their pans now everything here is kind of looking and smelling 
Very nice. How has it been at your place? It smells amazing. I I wonder though if I should cover my sausage because mine are a bit bigger to get a little steam so they cook. A little bit of steam enough to get into the middle of them. Yeah. I, th I think I need that, but my, my eggs are going. I just pulled my rashers and then I, I'm dying to slice into this soda bread. So I made this this morning with the traditional caraway seeds and raisins. Absolutely. Um, and then you made a yummy looking brown soda bread, right? I did. And I made, you know what? I made it yesterday Um, because it tends to rest well overnight. So it's not as good as what you get in the Green Hills in Dorchester, but I... I like it. I made it looks, the abdoms. It looks so fantastic. And now I read a really fun um, fact that you you know what's traditional is to find not an X but a cross on the top of the brown bread. And yes. some say it's to keep the devil out, and others say it's to let the devil out while it to lift the devil out. Well, I wouldn't believe either of those now in a hurry. But <laughs> um, <laughs> really, because I kind of liked I like that thought. <laughs> oh yeah, well you know we do we do come out with some planners, don't we? <laughs> so yeah. what will you and Tomas be doing actually on St. Patrick's Day this year? Uh, I'm going to open the studio in the morning, uh, and I'm going to teach my four sessions, and then we're uh, going to have some corned beef and cabbage together in the evening. Oh, that's so nice! And will you be making corned beef? Corned beef and cabbage it is. Maybe some mushy peas. What, right. are, mush what are mushy peas? Mushy peas are. Uh, Marathat peas, they're dried, and then you steep them overnight before you cook them, and they they they, they look for all intents and purposes like green peas, but they're just mush. So imagine a, a, a halfway between a mashed potato and a pea. Oh, that sounds really fun. It sounds like it'd be leprechaun approved. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is right. Nice. Tipped over my egg. Quite good, if I do say so myself. Woohoo! Oh, look at you. Yeah. Nice little pan flip there. I'm telling you. Well, I think I deserve a sip of my drink. Mm. It's a good pairing. How is your Irish tea party? My Irish tea party is going down a little bit too well, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> it is I nice. Was, I was thirsty. Uh, you were. <laughs> oh my God. No. I just balanced out all the heat from the, the fire. Yes. Okay. So my, my eggs are cooked. Yum. And it looks like we're ready. I'm ready to play it up. Okay. This looks so yummy. This looks like something that you would see in a bed and breakfast. At a yes, indeed. There's the look of the Irish man serving it here. Now, a bit of black pudding, a bit of white pudding. Lay down the sausage. Oh, we've got some sausage. And are those bangers also the to Tommy Ma Maloney? Everything is Tommy Maloney's that I'm okay. cooking here now. Yeah. Very nice. Beautiful. What do you like to serve on your brown bread? Kerrygold. <laughs> what else? Well, I like, what's one of the things I like about the brown bread is how versatile it is. Yes. Where you, where you, where, whether you're making it savory with the butter and dipping it with the meats or with like a nice churned butter and some yummy jam. Uh-huh. Well, there okay. is my plate. There is my plate full Irish. Oh, look at you. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to get my Kerrygold smothered on top. Yeah. My and I have the leftovers, which is going to go down very well. Okay. I did a nice, nice little smear there. Something's cooking still. Okay. Okay. How do we do? Oh, this looks like this looks like I'm ready to hit hit the hills. Well done. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Do you like to eat everything separate or do you like to I like to eat a lot of mix and match? Yes, I do. I like to mix okay. up everything. If I'm being honest. Okay. I'm going to try a bite of this banger. This looks. Mm. Yum. Yum. It's fantastic. 
it's such a great sausage because it does, you know, like I, I feel like oftentimes I'm getting those sweet Italian sausages for just like the everyday thing, but this has such great mild flavor. More savory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not too, uh, it doesn't make it, I don't know, as much of a statement, I guess, as like a, a sweet maple sausage. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Very good and meaty. Well, God bless Tommy Maloney. He's done this again. Mm. A little bite of the soda bread. Well, yeah, and Anna, maybe try try your soda, like put a bit of put a bit of a rash around to the soda bread and try it with the. Mine again, almost like chips. Mm-hmm. Mmm. This is fantastic. Well, next time I want to get your your um, brown bread recipe, Brian. I'm going to be honest, I cheated. What's that? I'm going to be honest, and I cheated. There's an amazing brown bread mix that you can buy from Ireland. It's an Adams mix. You pour it in the bowl, you add a half a pint of milk to it, you knead it into a dough, and it makes perfect bread. Wait, that was from a box? I am, no, it was from a package. <laughs> oh, you're so great. <laughs> okay, more secrets next year. Brian, thank you so much. What do we say? We say slancha? We say slancha. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Long Happy St. Patrick's Day. Day. <laughs> oh, what a pleasure. Next year we'll be doing this in the same kitchen, I hope. <laughs> I hope so too. To the next tea party. Cheers. Mm. Don't forget to wear green or you might get pinched. This is so yummy. We'll have a good traditional breakfast. Thank you so much, Brian. Show us what you're cooking for St. Patrick's Day. Tag us the, at the Chef's Pantry, hashtag the Chef's Pantry, and uh, we'll, we'll keep the good food coming. We have a great week for you. We have Mom to Mom on Wednesday, our other digital show with Maria Sansone. And great stuff during the week with the Hub Today and the Hub Today weekend, this weekend, and we'll be back in the kitchen next Monday. We'll see you soon. Slancha. I hope your pour is better than mine. <laughs>